guys, this is Mr. Mellings, and in this video, we are going to learn how to name and write the chemical formulas for compounds containing polyatomic ions. So before we get started learning how to name and write the chemical formulas for compounds containing polyatomic ions, let's first take a look at a common polyatomic ion list. And what I, do, uh, what I would do at this point is just pause this video, take a look at some of these polyatomic ions, and familiarize yourself with some of these as well. All right, uh, your teacher might have given you a common polyatomic ion list that you could refer to for uh, naming and writing the chemical formulas, but you should probably start to memorize some of these, and you should probably start to know that NH4 plus is ammonium. For example, you should probably start to know that NO2 minus is nitrite. You should know that NO3 minus is nitrate, etc., etc. And if you may memorize these, then writing the chemical formulas and naming compounds containing polyatomic ions will be a breeze. So let's start looking at some of the rules for naming and writing the chemical formulas for compounds containing polyatomic ions. Okay, so it says right here that when naming compounds containing polyatomic ions, we use the same rules as we would for type 1 and type 2 binary ionic compounds. And if you forgot how to name type 1 and type 2, go ahead and click that little card that just appeared in the top right hand corner and that will take you to that video. All right, but for now, let's take a look at some examples. So we have the chemical formulas and we can see that this chemical formula here contains a polyatomic ion, polyatomic ion here, polyatomic ion here, here, polyatomic ion here, and last but not least, a polyatomic ion right here. So how are we going to name these? Well, when we name these, we have to take a look at the cation or the positively charged ion and determine which group on the periodic table of elements it comes from. If it comes from group one or two and is either silver, zinc, or aluminum, it's going to be a type one. And when we name that, we just name the metal like we do right here for lithium because it comes from group one, followed by the polyatomic ion. So put this together, we have lithium sulfite. If we take a look right here, calcium is a type one metal. It comes from group two on the periodic table. So we just call it calcium followed by ClO3, which if we look on our polyatomic ion list, we'll see is chlorate. If we take a look right here, copper is a type two metal. It comes from the transition, transition metals on the periodic table. So when we come across something like this, we have to figure out what the charge of this copper ion is. Sometimes it's one plus, sometimes it's two plus. The way that we figure that out is by looking at nitrate. We know nitrate has a one minus charge. Two times one minus is two minus. If I only have one copper here, it must have a two plus charge. Remember that whenever you have an ionic compound, the two ionic charges here must always add up to zero. And the way that we get them to add up to zero is by adding these little subscripts right here. So when we name this right here, it's copper for Cu. And then we have to put a Roman numeral in parentheses indicating the charge of this ion here. So copper to nitrate will be the name of this one. If we take a look at this one down here, we have FeCr2O7. Once again, we know that iron is a type two metal. So we have to figure out the charge of this iron ion right here. And the way that we do that is by looking at dichromate. We know dichromate has a two minus charge. And if you only have one iron here, then it must have a two plus charge. And when we name this, this two turns into a Roman numeral two when we name it iron two dichromate. If we take a look right here, we don't need to put a Roman numeral in parentheses because magnesium is a type one metal. It comes from group two on the periodic table. So we just call this magnesium and then C2H3O2 is acetate. If we take a look right here, silver is a type one metal. So we just name it silver. We don't need to put a Roman numeral in parentheses. And we know that NO2 is nitrite for silver nitrite. All right, so that's how we're going to name these compounds containing polyatomic ions. But what if we're working the other way? What if you're given the name and you're asked to write the chemical formula? Well, let's take a look at some of those examples. All right, so what if you're given the name and you're asked to write the chemical formula? Well, it says right here that when we're writing the chemical formulas for compounds containing polyatomic ions, we're going to have to add subscripts to the cations and anions so that the ionic charges of both species add up to zero. The name of the game, whenever you have positive and negative ions bonded together, is to get their ionic charges added up to zero. And the way we do that is to add subscripts. But when we add a subscript to a polyatomic ion, we have to put parentheses around the polyatomic ion first, then add the subscript after it. So let's take a look at a couple examples. We have iron three which we know is Fe with a three plus charge. And we have sulfate, which we know is SO4 with a two minus charge, right? 
These two ionic charges don't add up to zero right now, so the way we get them to add up to zero is to add a two right here, a subscript of two to iron and a subscript of three to sulfate. Okay, but take a look what we did. We had to put parentheses around the polyatomic ion first before we add a subscript of three. We can see now that three times uh, two minus is six minus, and we see right here that two times three plus is six plus, and so now these ionic charges add up to zero. Same thing right here. Copper two is Cu with a two plus charge, and we know nitrate has a negative one charge, right, or a one minus charge. So we're going to need two nitrate ions, so we put parentheses around the nitrate, and then add our subscript of two. If we take a look right here at ammonium dichromate, we know ammonium is NH4 with a one plus charge. And we know dichromate has a two minus charge. These two ionic charges though don't add up to zero, so we have to put parentheses around the ammonium and then add a subscript of two. Two times positive one is positive two and that will cancel out the negative two charge of dichromate. If we take a look right here at lead four phosphate, we can see that lead four is PB with a four plus charge, and we have phosphate, which is PO4, with a three minus charge, four. Uh, so what we have to do here is we have to add a parentheses around this polyatomic ion and add a subscript of four, because four times three minus is 12 minus, and three times four plus is 12 plus, and now they'll add up to zero. All right, so when you're given the name and you're asked to write the chemical formulas, that's how we're going to do that. So let's jump in and work on some sample or example problems now. And then at the end of this video, I'm going to give you some problems to work on your own. Okay, in this first example, it says we have to write the chemical formula for iron 3 chlorate. Well, we know that iron 3 is Fe with a 3 plus charge, and we know that chlorate is ClO3 with a minus 1 charge. If we take a look over here, we can see that chlorate is right here which is ClO3 minus. So we'll notice that these two ionic charges don't add up to zero, so what we need to do is add a parentheses to this polyatomic ion and then add a subscript of three because three times negative one is negative three and one times positive three is positive three. So our correct chemical formula for this will simply be FeClO3 three. Okay, so that is going to be the correct chemical formula for this one right here. Let's take a look at another example. All right, in this example right here, we have to write the chemical formula for ammonium sulfate. So ammonium, if we take a look right here, is NH4 with a positive one charge. So NH4 with a positive one charge. And we know that sulfate, if we take a look over here, sulfate is going to be SO4 with a two minus charge. Here's sulfate right here, SO4 two minus, SO4 two minus. These two ionic charges do not add up to zero. So we're going to need two ammonium ions. We're going to need two ammonium ions. Two times positive one is positive two, which is going to cancel out the negative two charge here. So our correct chemical formula is going to be NH4 two SO4. Let's take a look at another example. In this example here, write the chemical formula for calcium phosphate. We know calcium comes from group two on the periodic table, and all those ions there form two plus charges. If we take a look at our polyatomic ion list, we see that phosphate is PO4 with a three minus charge, right? If we take a look at phosphate and find that on our periodic table, there you go, PO4 three minus. These two ionic charges do not add up to zero, so how will you get them to add up to zero? Well, you're gonna need three calciums, and we never put parentheses around a monatomic ion. However, we're gonna need two phosphates, so we have to put parentheses around a polyatomic ion, and that subscript is going to be two. So our correct chemical formula here is Ca3PO4 two for calcium phosphate. Let's take a look at another example. This example here, we have manganese four carbonate. We have to write the chemical formula for it. For manganese, we have Mn, and what does this, what does this four mean here? It means it has a four plus charge. Carbonate, if we take a look right here, is CO3 with a minus two charge, CO3 with a minus two or two minus charge. These two ionic charges don't add up to zero, so you guessed it, you're gonna need two of these right here. And our correct chemical formula is gonna be MnCO3-2 for manganese four carbonate. Let's take a look at another example. In this example right here, it says, what is the name of NaNO3? Na is sodium. 
whoops, sodium. We're working backwards now, sodium. And sodium comes from group one on the periodic table, so it's a type one metal. We don't need to figure out what type of ion it is. All these guys form one plus, or just simply plus ions. And NaNO3 is nitrate, nitrate. Put that together, we have sodium nitrate. Let's take a look at another example. This example, it says, what is the name of PbC2H3O2? So if we take a look at Pb, Pb is right here on the periodic table. It's a type 2 metal, so we have to figure out what the charge of this lead ion is. We do that by looking at acetate. Acetate has a negative 1 charge. 2 times negative 1, though, is negative 2. If I only have one lead here, it must have a 2 plus charge. So when I name this now, this is going to be lead. And because lead comes from this region on the periodic table, we have to put a Roman numeral in parentheses to indicate its charge. Its charge is 2 here. And then C2H3O2 is acetate. Lead to acetate is going to be the name of this one. Let's take a look at one final example. In this example right here, it says, what is the name of SNCR2O7? So tin, again, is a type 2 metal. So we have to figure out what the charge of this tin ion is going to be. We do that by looking at dichromate. Dichromate has a 2 minus charge, but there are two of these. So 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. Because I only have one tin here, its charge must be a positive 4. So when I name this, this is going to be tin Roman numeral 4, this 4 here means that the charge of that tin ion is positive 4. And then Cr2O7 is going to be dichromate. So tin 4 dichromate will be the correct answer to this one. Okay, so there we go. So what I would do now in this, uh, this video is pause the video right now and try these on your own. Go ahead and try to write the chemical formula for lithium carbonate. Go ahead and try to name what MgC2H3O22 is going to be. Take five minutes to try these on your own. I'm going to give you guys the answers right now. How did you do? Hopefully you got these all right. If so, then you are an expert at naming and writing the chemical formulas for compounds containing polyatomic ions and congratulations if you like what you see go ahead and click that little bomb in the bottom right hand corner that will subscribe you to my channel and feel free to leave any comments or questions in the comment section down below and i really hope you guys found this helpful